Good afternoon. On behalf of the board director of Head Consortium, I would like to welcome you to 2016 Best Practice Showcase. My name is Veronica Ortiz, and I will be in charge of introducing the speakers for the presentation today. This session is being recorded. The presenters will let you know whether you will be able to address your question at any time or, to, or after the presentation has finished. This presentation will be delivered, deli delivered in English, so channel number one is available in Spanish. We will appreciate that you will change your mobile phone to vibration or silent in order to have full attention to this session. Finally, we will distribute the evaluation form. Please make sure to complete it before the session is over and handle it before you leave this room. Now we are ready to start. The presenters for this section are Rolando Mendez and Erika Sigman. Their biography information is included in the conference app and website. The title of the presentation is Organizing for Student Success. Please welcome Rolando Mendez and Erika Sigman. students is what goes out there and changes that those environments. 
Uh, and one of the questions we we have talked over and over is what are the forces that are affecting higher education, art, uh, our operation specifically, and how do they affect student learning and retention in virtual environments? I don't know how many of you are familiar with online learning, but it brings new challenges on how to teach, how to reach it. You have a stu uh, classroom full of diverse students of different backgrounds, different ages, different generations, and, and it brings new challenges for the faculty and administrators as well. And one of the lessons we have learned is that we need to develop uh, adaptive capabilities as faculty, as, as administrators, and as students, and that the environment affect, the environments affect student learning and retention. And we, we have to be able to meet those changes and to do something about what's happening. And I always like to bring up this little comic strip that I found that it, 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 it kind of captures how things work in our university. I don't know if, if that's the case with yours, right? But usually, it's so like when we talk about change, I remember when I first started in the university in 2009, we were talking about what we needed to do next, but then we created the committee that would be in charge of making those changes, and then that committee would create a subcommittee to do that, and then they would think, uh, oh no, we need research to, to, uh, for that and to, to do action. And, and it's something that I think it hinders our, uh, our progress as universities, and I think it also reflects on student learning and student retention, because students are changing, and we need to be able to adapt ourselves to uh, meet those changes. And uh, we like to, uh, when we organize ourselves, it, it has, this has been a continuous process that has been a decade long, more than a decade, and in the past couple of years, we have changed a lot. <laughs> uh, and for example, we, we, we like to look at Lawrence and Norwich contingency theory, which establishes that uh, organizations or organizing processes are contingent to their environments, and that uh, same organization can have different configurations, and Usually with academia, it's like we like to standardize, you know, we like to everything to work and to act and have the same, you know, we can do that because the, the other campus is not doing it or we don't, uh, we can do that because, well, the other uh, department or the other division doesn't have the same resources as we do. So it's a little bit about a standardization and, and I think every area or every department, every campus should work uh, around what realities they have. And, and here in the island, although we're a small island compared to the states, of course, uh, every region is really different in terms of student population. It, it's quite a, a astonishing how different they are. Uh, and we have organized our people, and uh, we have organized our people around uh, functions and processes, services, learning, and management. Usually when people in academia hear management, they go like, uh, right? Because it sounds like we're talking about a business, but uh, academia and learning and teaching is all about management. We have some resources that we have to make the best of those resources. And a teacher manages, a professor manages the classroom and what happens inside the classroom. And the department chair, chair myself manages what the faculty has, the students are, are in those programs. And, and we have to think about management and, and I don't, I don't like to use the term leadership because I sometimes it's you know, taken to idealistic levels and I think leadership without management is not possible. But that's my opinion. And this is how we have ended in the, that's how we've grown. Uh, the, the division started really small, about five people more or less. Then it started growing and growing according to the needs that we just found. And we have a student population, all my student population, around 1,500 <laughs> students that are dispersed throughout the world. We have students in Japan. We have students in Hawaii, in Germany, Spain. Uh, I know the yeah. Italy, minor outlying islands. So uh, our structure is comprised of five members in the technical support team, five instructional uh, multimedia designers that are led by two faculty members in the area of education pedagogy. And then we have 20 faculty members from different disciplines, biomedical sciences, uh, networks and telecommunications, uh, German, English, Spanish, math, statistics, uh, communications, marketing, human resources. Uh, we also have two academic directors. Uh, one is for the undergraduate level, which includes associates and bachelors, and then we have one for the graduate and doctoral level. We also have one administrative assistant, and we have a 
one librarian that right now is working with graduate students with whom we need to reinforce their research skills and we need to strengthen the, uh, the part. And at the head of our structure is the Associate Dean of Studies, which we are uh, actually with us today, uh, the big boss. So in terms of design or how we structure it ourselves, we ask how do structures in higher education relate to student learning and success. And, and what we learn is that organizing, not organizing, just organizing and reorganizing, because we, we keep changing how we work, how we structure, who works with who. And then reorganizing is the result of a continuous process of reflection and evaluation. I think we need to be really sincere about the, the reflection and evaluation process. And then from a transdisciplinary perspective, because I might see things from a business or communications perspective, but I can see her perspective as a linguistic professor or someone from human resources, and we can get like a broader perspective of how things could work uh, in our department. And this is something you probably heard in your organization, you know, that uh, I want you to find a bold and innovative way to do everything exactly the same way it's been done for 25 years. We, we talk about innovation in academia, but somehow we end up doing the same thing we have done in the past. So it, it, we're, we try to break a little bit uh, with that. And we, we, has, uh, we have established that we wanted to, wanted to encourage some uh, specific behaviors in our faculty members and in our administrative staff. And one of them is learning. I mean, we're teaching students. Uh, we're teaching them to learn, to be lifelong learners. And we, ourselves, as faculty members, as, uh, as uh, uh, leaders, we need to be learners ourselves. We also uh, foster collaboration because we, we have found that collaboration leads to better results. Usually the first few months or years can be bumpy getting different perspectives, you know, to get along or to find a common ground. Uh, but we, we have found that collaboration fosters more innovation than working alone or working separately in different directions. Accountability, because uh, we need to be accountable what we do and we, we don't do. And entrepreneurship, and I will, I will get into this uh, you know, a little bit later. And we know uh, and we see diversity both as challenge and opportunity because, for example, our faculty uh, is comprised of, of 20, like I said, 26 faculty members total, including myself, and 25, sorry. And then you have uh, people that are, have been teaching for over 30 years, 40 years. We also have people such as myself that we started